Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Antoine. Uh, it's really a pleasure and, uh, to be here and uh, talk on something which is very important and often in economics does not get much attention. Uh, it is not that if you look at the economic growth, the two things need to be ciphered out in the economic growth process. That first, which is the sector which is producing the economic growth? Hmm? Often we say, and it was a French economist hmm, uh, who once said, uh, it was Perot in 1950s, he used to say that uh, it is not important that which is the sector which is producing, but sometimes equally it is important where the production taking place. Hmm? So the two things are very important and if most of the economists, if you look at it, they focus on where, uh, sorry, which is the sector which is producing. And uh, Perot called that propulsive industries. Propulsive industries are those industries which are really leading the economic growth. But trouble is that, for example, in India or actually in Europe, uh, you don't know production is taking place, things are moving up, economic growth is taking place, but it is very difficult to also point out where the production is taking place. And the areas, location, geography of production becomes very important. And that is where I am going to focus on. Because as industrial revolution, now in the fourth industrial revolution, driven by IT sector, is driving the economic growth, is this one, but which are the location which are driving the economic growth? It is not the all. It may be Paris, it may be Lyon, it may be Arles, or any other towns which actually in France, for example, may be driving the economic growth. And that is where recognition of those centers becomes very important. Now, from this, I will move to where I am going to locate. Now, if you look at the classification broad regional level, you have a rural and urban economies. That is actually traditional classification. Now, people are adding to the semi-rural as well. In rural and urban classification, if you look at the world economy, I feel that more than 80% of the GDP emerges from the urban areas. Hmm? And that means, like IT sector, urban becomes very important for economists like us or geographers like us. Hmm? That's where actually we are going to look into this. So, the second point which I drive. But, are the, uh, uh, is uh, urban, are, are all urban important? Hmm? Are all urban important in the production process? Then you can classify the urban in two parts. No, there may be, for example, we did classification of that there may be propulsive towns which may be producing more and there may be sedentary towns which are subsisting on the income generated from the propulsive towns that possibility also exists. But now if the urban, now I am coming back to the major question which actually I generated, if the urban, if you look at the George Simmel, hmm, a, uh, a German sociologist, he says urban is the future and the rural is the past. Hmm? If that is the future we are heading for, what kind of future we need, what kind of urban we need? That is the question again I am coming to and this is. So what happened if the urban is producing, for example, I confidently know that in India uh, approximately over 70 percent of the GDP comes from urban areas. Hmm? It is huge uh, among the five economies of the world, but 70 percent originates from the where only 32 percent of the population is located. They are generating the total economy of India about 70 percent and I am sure France may be much more hmm? because advanced economies have more concentration in urban areas than rural areas. Now, uh, if that is there, what kind of urban we want? That is the trouble and whether, now if that is the things, then the city making becomes also a process. For example, if you have IT industry, people are innovating, people are rising, 
people are doing this or that, artificial intelligence to everything, same is happening to the cities. And acceleration in the city building process has been a process which actually we see in the 20th century and we are continuing in 21st century. That is another very important aspect which we can observe through the 20th to 21st century. Now, in city building process, are we changing ourselves? That is the basic question. Is the city building process has become such a thing? And here what I am trying to do, if that is the city building is the hard desire for all of us, the bigger cities, the faster cities, the wonderful cities, the eco cities, the every kind of cities, which actually we can imagine is smart cities. If that is our hard desire, are we also leading to some kind of collapse in the system in long run? What kind of, with what kind of consequences we are going to? And I am tracking what I am doing. I am not talking in the traditional economic sense. Then when I am talking, I am talking and taking a deviation uh, to this development as alternative to development. Hmm? Uh, uh, sorry, alternative of development, that what actually, uh, uh, that what we can say, that is alternative development process which can be fueling growth. There is no alternative to development, but we can have alternative development. Hmm? That, that part I would like to make it clear and that is where I am trying to focus here. Now, in city making, if that has become a business uh, that what actually we are going to do. But before I come to the city making an impact on the human life, I what I will be covering in this lecture in one hour slightly I will be faster because I need more time sometimes to discuss and elaborate because these are the philosophical conceptual part which I try to really focus. And I repeat this seminar again this year because I feel there are lots of value in this. I would have talked on economic growth and urbanization. Uh, but I preferred it because this provokes you for alternative thinking and alternative thinkings need to be really our in the system too and very important than in any, anywhere else and that what actually I would like to try to bring here. So I will have some kind of background then we have fast urbanism like fast cities we are making into that then we will come to, to alternative provocation and then we will come uh, to summing up in one hour time or so. So now let us look for uh, something. Now what urban classical sociologist economist will talk and what we need be as economist we need to learn from the disciplines which are very important like sociology geography because then th we are able to explain it fuller hmm? because if the knowledge hmm, one Sufi once said uh, that, that when they were searching truth, particularly the Rumi and uh, 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 then you, all of you may be knowing Rumi and others. What they said, that the truth was one, the God has broken the truth everywhere in the world and it is scattered in the pieces. So what you have to do, single disciplines, I just take the metaphor of that and bring to the, our knowledge that if the knowledge was one, Academicians like us have broken it into the pieces in economics, sociology, geography and other and you cannot understand the full knowledge unless you understand other disciplines equally. But yes, as a humans, we have limitation of the time, we have limitation of the space. So we do, but yeah, we try to learn also and that is where I am bringing to you the three classical, classical, uh, two sociologists, one you can put a philosopher, for example, Durkheim, sociologist, he says cities, what they do as a human, I mean we are living in the cities, what they do, the disintegration of the moral cohesions, all of you know. Integration is not actually taking place, the cohesion is broken down in the cities and that is one part further the creating more cities in economic growth or we are harming the social cohesion, that is a question which actually I will bring. Second, Weber says the growth of calculative rationalities. Our rationalities, what we call the homo economicus, is grown in the urban, as a uh, uh, homo urbanis. Hmm? That, that what is actually taking place. And the Marx says, which is culmination of the thinking process, that the destructive forces unleashed by the development of capitalist mode of production. 
and that was the way it says if the capitalism appeared in the Europe from the earlier feudal mode of production it, it appeared first he says that obviously the urban are not cause of this destructive forces I mean capitalism to emerge but urban were the center where the manifestations of the capitalism happened the first hmm? so you remember this that becomes very important and now I come to the most serious which uh, Robert Parks talks about and Robert Parks talks about that now read this this part what he says the settlement making the city making process is a very very uh, I mean uh, many things are embedded in that uh, many consequences are there and he says I will read for you the city and the urban environment he write in the the book name city hmm? in uh, uh, in 1925 30s he was writing in Chicago and became known as Chicago School of Social Ecology and he writes the city and the urban environment presents the man's most consistence and the, on the whole the most successful attempt to remake the world he lives in more often his heart's desire but if the city is the world which man created it is the world which he is henceforth condemned to live thus indirectly and without any clear sense of the nature of his task in making the city the last sentence see the emphasis in making the city man has remade himself hmm? have we remade ourselves in the cities and that is the question and in the sustainable development we have to really ask and that becomes very important for us to understand now now look at other side of the story now look at the UN data I just was scrolling down the UN data I found that today 55 percent of the world population is living in cities so now consequences in the city is living second a uh, southern continent global south for example India Pakistan Bangladesh all they are uh, Africa Latin America they are going through urban revolution it means there is a very fast growth of the urban population and the world population today around 55 percent of the population of the urban areas comes from the global south 13 percent by Europe 13 by Africa but Asia sorry Asia has 55 percent Asia has 55 percent it is said that by 2050 there will be addition whatsoever will be addition in urban population 90 percent will come from the global south <coughs> you can imagine out of 43 million 10 million plus cities in the world if you see most of these cities are located in Asia hmm? so you, you take Tokyo which is has about 29 million you take uh, uh, New Delhi which is around same uh, population and and they miss uh, Mumbai where I live it is around 32 million hmm? because it is divided in territories and it is a huge conurbation hmm? the most important city of India and that is huge again then you have Mexico City around 26 million then you have Sao Paulo and all these cities they become very important from Karachi to everywhere hmm? and that is where we have to understand what the consequences they have displayed in the northern, northern part global now, north and what consequences they can have in the global south out of this urbanization process now uh, from here we go to yeah now if the city is the uh, territory or the space where the growth is taking place for example in the artificial intelligence we find that Tesla is coming or actually Musk is coming and we find that in artificial intelligence new forms are coming the city if the production is taking place in the city as economists we see many cities are becoming now business hmm? what is happening city making has become business because every country want to speed up the economic growth for example in India 100 smart cities it became 120 almost smart cities in India I don't know what is happening now because last five six years the government is not giving much emphasis because perhaps we uh, went down because people do, did not like that idea at all because we are still in the slow regimes 
Hmm? Although economic growth is faster, but we are still in the socially solo regime. So in increase, what is happening? The, in the city making process, what is happening? There is an increased onslaught of private capital. Why private capital? Like artificial intelligence, IT sector, private capital. So city making becoming uh, uh, private. And that becomes a private capital is going like anything. So you see, in Mumbai, we have Pune, we have Trump Tower also there. Hmm? So you, you can imagine in Mumbai, uh, in, in, in Pune, so you, you have those kind of capital flowing in from far because there is a lots of possibility to re-profit and capital moves to anywhere where David Harvey will call that anywhere 3% and above return on the capital is very important and 3% if it is getting more, it will move from the accumulation of the accumulated regions to non-accumulated regions, from where the return becomes high, where the production factors of productions are very lucrative and you can get better return. Hmm? So that happens. And then what is happening? If the capital has to move faster, the policy has to be more faster. Where all of you will come in future, you have to make the policy for the rest of the world sitting in maybe Paris. That is the trouble hmm? and means you may make a draft here, you send to India and India has to follow and it has to be faster. Hmm? That is the trouble and that's what I'm going to take up. Hmm? That fast policy, fast private capital, they have to come in and city building process characterized by fast cities. City building is a business now. Hmm? That's what I say. So now what we have in India, I, one part I'm living in Mumbai, which is a private city. Hmm? The city which used to be public cities now turning into the private. Look at, this is two nuances here. When the capital is private, it has the capital labor relation turn into the different kind of thing. When the territory is cap private, geography is private, it has different nuances to the people. And be mindful of that because in certain territory you cannot access. Hmm? certain territory you cannot access that becomes more issue and maybe tomorrow there may be private nations hmm? if we have private cities there may be whole politics and the whole the uh, sovereignty of the world is actually given to the private capital and that if we are evolving like this where the territory is becoming like this so and why it is coming mythology of world city legitimates that and who was that? Saskia Sassen in 1991, 92. Saskia Sassen, all of you know from Columbia University, very famous urban sociologist and she brought the conception much more vigorously although it was existing, the, uh, uh, I mean this world city concept long but she brought that Mumbai, no, not Mumbai, London, Tokyo and New York. Hmm? They become the primary importance because the, all the financial capital were located uh, and transacted from there in the world. Uh, uh, shaping the world economy, that's what she brought. So what has happened in that, in the fast urbanism, if we have to do the private capital, fast policies, they have to come. So what the fast urbanism, speed up urbanism, so what I refer to the fast? Fast is not only referring to the fast making of the cities, like in one year time you make the city. Chinese are very famous for that, Shenzhen. What we call Shenzhen speed. Uh, a small town in 1972 around, one lakh pop, 100,000 population, hmm, and it moved to about millions of the population. Hmm. So that, that what actually transformation, Shenzhen speed what we are referring to. So you have fast making, but also fast living. You understand? You have no time for anybody else. You, you can see yourself in the Paris. You don't have time for each other. There is no social time. And that means not only building the city fast, but living the city fast. So what is happening symbolizes fast living. And fast living has fast growth linked to that fast growth. Because if you everything has to be Basically, this is the growth has to be fast, then living is implicated for that and the building of the city is implicated for that, that you have to be faster. So you have to speed up consumption, production, exchange, both basically production, consumption and exchange, 
and then you have to have fast policy somebody like you should be making that and then you have fast design because fast policy means some architect will sit down and they will design the fast fast way how to in india government of india came up with the new education policy as the professors they are concerned with that some architects sat down and lay down the design of all universities that how what will be where the department should be that what should be standard and we don't have in mumbai that space so you you can imagine that that fast policy is implemented to everybody else that what happens the fast transport all of you know bullet train as famous in uh, tgvs in paris and then you have fast city building process obviously and many more things you can add in that process and that can happen uh the fast building in actually uh what is happening for example if you take the why there is a revolts in most part of the world uh particularly in india i have seen this revolt the people surrender but also revolt i am sure the pakistan will be the same uh, i am sure that bangladesh is same i am sure that sri lanka is same and the, the many traditional uh, societies uh, where the economists are turning cities into machine people coming in from villages they are turning into the uh, villages hmm? because they they have to some way meet the, both the end hmm? and that that what is happening so what is happening the in that one the fast cities in the global north are transpla transplanted now because like smart cities what i said because if it is, has become business for the corporates and the capitalist and the very important thing you need to know the state is now entrepreneurial hmm? so uh, uh uh state entrepreneurialism what we say the state in the new liberal regime looks for everything as a business hmm? so even if they do anything they see that their uh, basically budget is not disturbed so it has become entrepreneurial in nature entrepreneurial in nature and it is linked in the agentic change uh, a change sorry agentic change means that there are corporate groups and uh, consultants who are advising the corporate uh, state and state is actually implementing the policy on the people and their subject so eminent domain uh, uh, after all eminent domain is turning into a agentic change and a business entrepreneur like a big state turning into the business entrepreneurs and turning the to the people that you do business for example in india i can say for last 5 7 years we have been doing uh, the government is asking create entrepreneurialism in the people they want to create entrepreneurial society now from entrepreneurial state to entrepreneurial society and all of you know some of you from india uh, 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 all of you know in india the kind of inequality you prevail i mean prevailing the caste system untouchability where it is not possible and uh, there is a always a scarcity of the wealth and capital at the lower strata it is not possible for them to become entrepreneur hmm? very quickly so all this is happening so what is happening that the thinking of everyday life in the global south because of this uh, being paced up our life are being pushed somebody is pushing from behind that pace up hmm? that is happening instantiated instantiated basically it is every day like instantaneous growth rate all of you know hmm? when you do a regression equation of the time regress on the time instantaneous uh, growth rate what we say instantiated become ephemeral current that is what is happening without any deep thinking of sustainability that is what is happening and they are being thrown to the different urban and social rhythms in those cities when you are building the cities in a traditional society they are basically thrown to the new urban rhythm and material conditions so their material conditions are changing their different uh, social rhythm is changing and they are consumed to the uh, speed through the alternation of the sense of time the time sense of time is changing from the uh, social time to they are becoming the clock time you know social time i will come to that very quickly uh, socio economic conditions are changing ecological and condition and the body hmm? body under capitalism hmm? 
read a French sociologist again, I say, uh, he wrote wonderfully, I will come to that. Hmm? A uh, body under capitalism, where the mind is somewhere else, but you have to push your body somewhere else, because that is that is a kind of uh, uh, things which is happening, and that. Now, this fast urbanism sometimes is out of context. For example, in most of the cities in India, when you are bringing this kind of changes, sometimes out of context, and uh, they are exotic in nature, because somewhere you brought the big machines glossy buildings and people are thinking that what is happening here because they have not seen those glossy buildings and and this is planning in the global south and that is leading to the exotic uh, what we say the monoculturing uh, of the things monoculturing means that whole policy has become only directed by the certain agents to the state and that is why say a uh, state getting embedded in the agentic chain, hmm? agentic chain. So now, uh, so sorry, now these cities have been called by different name. Hmm? These cities, uh, they have been called by different name as a euphemism, you can say. Uh, they are eco cities sometimes, we were hearing long tales of the eco cities hmm? and then now today smart cities. As if the IT will solve all our problems. Hmm? I, I don't say that they cannot solve. As if this is the only solution of the world. Hmm? And they are very important. IT is very important. But what happens to the question of inequalities? What happens to the question of the labor? What happens to the question of the uh, housing issues? Uh, smarting uh, something. Uh, uh, what happens, the person, for example, I am doing with the European Commission research on how the digitalization as urbanization hmm, is actually going on in India. What happens the people, 70 percent of the people who are not able to use the digital technology? What happens really in their life? They are not able to fill their bank form. And in India, many people lost their gas connection because on the phone they have to hear Press 1 if you want connection, press 2 if you don't want connection. And the most of them pressed anything. <laughs> and they lost all the farmers. Hmm? I was heading my uh, institute and I was advising them. So that happened. Uh, uh, some question came. They, they have made a few. I don't say that they have met the nation is also very confusing. What is actually smart city for many? But if you look at the textbook definitions, it is all driven by the digital technology and control and everything. So, for example, I will come to that some of the cities. I will come. I will come to that. No? It's still they are theoretical, but they are actualizing it. Hmm? That, that is what is happening. So, the fast cities, what they are doing also, uh, for example, Navi Mumbai, where I live, what I was telling, hmm? they are one. There is a three-four circuit which is operating. Hmm? Three-four circuit are operating in those cities when the city making happens. One is the accumulation circuit. Hmm? Accumulation circuit where the capitalists accumulate the profit. You buy the land. After ten years, you sell in uh, what we say millions and billions. I often go to the lakh and crore, uh, but millions and billions you send sell it. So this is accumulation where the farmers sell the land very cheap and you then profit over that and, and do all kind of thing. Survival circuit, these are the people who are displaced and they have no means of production anymore now. You understand? Only the labor and the capital which they got out of the selling the land, they enjoyed it hmm, by the time. Because the small capital, they bought some conspicuous good because the cities have taught them buy a car, buy a motorcycle and consume all the wealth, or capital, whatsoever they got out of that uh, and then become a slum dweller. And that is again is a process which we call survival circuit. Third group of there is most serious is the surplus population. Surplus population is not that something extra, I mean uh, you have some saving. These are the group of people we are using the terminology to show the people that whom the city does not need. For example, in the Paris city, there may be a group of people 
people may be thinking that these fellows they need to go out, they are useless for the city. Similarly, in Mumbai, uh, which actually city I have lived, I give example, sometimes slum dwellers are not desired by the capitalist. That you move out, for them there is no impact on their life because just they do not benefit out of you and they do not need it, need you and that we call surplus population. So, this is enormous. So, one what is happening? Now, look at for sustainability angle and equality angle. What was there in the pre in urban and the post urban, pre urban, pre making of the city where the, the means of production like land was distributed among the people at least people were surviving with the means of production. City came and you did not have that IT skill. How you will be absorbed in the labor market? You do not know. Ultimately, you become the somebody who is manual laborer or actually the head loader and then ultimately you are out. Hmm? Sometimes when the mechanization comes in, you are also out and ultimately you become unequal citizens and why I say this? Because for last 15, 20 years, I am teaching as a researcher, as a PhD scholar, I have seen this is happening. It is truth. It is not actually, uh, because the people do not talk from those. It is very important. In the post-colonial writing, I read one thing and that is very important. I want to tell you, very serious. Do not look at the one side of the photograph. Look from the other side of the photograph. Hmm? It's very important for us. If you look from the other side of the photograph, you will also see that what is there. Hmm? And then what is happening, the glossy images of the cities which people are producing is really not the truth always. The large is hidden. The photograph is selective. It does not show anything except the heart desire of the person who is creating that. Hmm? So remember it photograph may not be showing because there you need to have somebody else like you who can look from the other side of the photograph as well. It does not mean growth is bad, but how much it is sustainable in terms of the social equity, ecological consequences and economic inequality. That is actually major part which actually I am coming to here. So, fast cities, north experiencing slow city movement. Now, north fast has done, I am telling the global north and south. North means the usual north developed countries and global south is a south, hmm? but there is always north in the south. Hmm? As you have south in the north now in the migrants, hmm? in Paris also you have south and that is what you see the TV debate. I do not follow French, but yesterday I looked at it. There is a very, very provocative debate because of the murder of the girl. So, you, you see those debates uh, and then you have another uh, south. So, the south and north which actually south and north which was territorial entities, they have turned into the abstraction and the capital which actually represent themselves both in the glo uh, global south and global north. Huh? So, remember this the south and north is a uh, kind of process which actually you need to uh, see that. So, this is what is happening south is being enslaved to the speed and a, 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 a common man and what actually is happening, what impact is taking place on a common man for his livelihood, I told you, for his political articulation because uh, again I say, I am living in a private city, we do not have voting right in that. It is managed by the corporate groups. Uh, then you have cultural and uh, everyday life, what is happening to that and what happened to the environmental sustainability. These all have the consequences for democracy, for participation, for articulation, uh, for belonging and for citizenship. All actually they have their own kind of thing. Problem now, hey, how do we ground this argument for? If this is the kind of I told you, this is the problem. But what is the alternative? That is the question I am coming to in very, very uh, 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 fast to that. that uh, how do we ground the argument for alternative development? If this is so, if we are convinced that what is the alternative development, eurythmic development, eurythmia, I will come to that. Eurythmia means that where the body, environment or society, environment and capitalism operate in synchronous fashion. That is called eurythmia. Uh, for example, our heart beats because our all the organ function properly. 
eurythmic uh, that is what actually we say and this is why so society also has the same thing now more context based development context based for example more territorial based development more context oriented uh, that what actually we try to bring it the presentation introduces a few provocations i try to bring few hmm? maybe that you can add more uh, how in the city building in the economic speed and uh, urban and social organization and everyday city life i try to really bring here so uh, now very quickly i will come and then move to the provocation because of the limitation of time now i told you that north is now moving particularly in territorial uh, north and europe uh, has moved to slow city movement when they realize what the fast cities are creating to their havoc to their life they they are moving to the slow cities and it is basically driven by 1980s against the mcdonald hmm? where the burgers became the famous like mac chicken to everything hmm? and even today we go for fast food and they say as the fast food has not been good for the health the fast cities are also disrupting the societies hmm? that is why actually i am bringing here so sitta slow it emerged from italy from a, a very important country because lots of ideas emerged from italy so the four italian towns basically joined together in 99 and they said this is not a good development we need to really think for alternative maybe a small alternative but let us seek for the alternative and these were the city which were up uh, 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 involved in that and there were more than now there are more than 287 cities around the world in 2033 countries in october 22 hmm? so there are actually this movement is growing and i hope that it grows uh, faster now what they what these slow cities look for <coughs> they look for environmental policies which are actually uh, sustainable they look for i am not going in detail you can look at the website of the slow city movement and you find all the details hmm? you they look for infrastructure policy which is not gigantic they look for quality of urban uh, policies and societies that is another thing agricultural tourism and artisan policy they look for local production local consumption that what actually they see and hospitality and even if you go how the hospitality should be there social cohesion is very important for say that partnership is equally important for them so that it is a socially integrative process rather than disintegrative process what they uh, they they do that there are many condition for that so this is emerging from the fast uh, slow city movement is basically emerging from the fast city movement uh, i leave it here quickly i'll go to the provocation uh, now i i say so this is very important part because in the slow food movement a local communities concept of territory that promotes local food similarly the city which is promoted by the local rather than the capitalists around the world that what actually say and that is where they bring geographical distinctiveness and that part is bringing uh, they bring it now i am coming to the provocation uh, i will borrow from daniel kahneman all of you know daniel kahneman who was a psychologist uh, and a psychoanalyst and he uh, wrote on economics and he got nobel prize for that so uh, what he contributed to that there are two mode of thinking we are always involved in the first mode of thinking is the fast thinking process intuitive for example if i take my finger to my eyes immediately i shut down i may be putting the medicine in the eye but my eye does not realize that it is intuitive faster and the second is the reasoned out a uh, second mode of thinking is the slow mode of thinking where you take the data mobilize your reason whether this person was telling something is truth or no you reason it out and take decision because then you mobilize your logical unit from the brain hmm? like in the computer so you mobilize the logical unit and decide what sort of data is available in your brain uh, that this is truth or not truth so that is slow process because it takes time for you 2 hours 3 hours and sometimes you say no i will tell you after 2 days why we say the two days because i want to reason it out whether it is truth or not i mean it is good or not 
So that is where the two mode of thinking and that what Kahneman's implication in the economics development is that, economic development, that slow process, slow thinking is very important to really take decision which, impli which will implicate sustainability someday. And that is why we have to reason it out, where we have reached and how we are moving ahead. So now this, so provocation number one. Now I come to the provocation number one, which is very provocative, in fact. Hmm. It is sometimes provoked me when I was telling that everywhere in the world, we are being trained that all the economists like Professor Antoine will be mobilized by the French government and told that please suggest us how we design the corporate human resource policy in order to deliver the fastest growth. And we are designed to create fast. And where I am telling, please grow slow. Huh? It's most provocative. And that means that is important for us. Why? This is the line which actually gives you. It is possible to achieve higher human development with even slower and sustainable growth of economies. It is not that actually you have to disrupt everything and really reach everywhere. So it is possible because without disruptions also, but the while building the fast growth machines. Fast growth machines are the fast cities itself, what I am talking about. And now this list of the cities which you are asking, now you have Qatar's education city is coming in like in that same line. You have Masdar, you have Abu Dhabi, you have India's smart cities, Rajarhat in Kolkata, and you have Lavasa near Mumbai, you have Navi Mumbai itself, you have gift city Gujarat, huh, in, uh, uh, infratech, uh, what they call gift city near Gandhinagar, our prime minister's major uh, uh, kind of aim to build that kind of city to displace the Mumbai. Hmm? And then Logos, Eco Atlantic, then you have Mauritius, Mauritius Lab, huh? Blizzy and Marina and Mall uh, of Mauritius, Ghana's Hope City, uh, Uganda's you have uh, uh, city, then you have Korea's Sangdo, you have Zambia's Lusaka, you have Chinese eco cities, many eco cities are there, Indonesia's uh, Lipo cities, and then you have even Afghanistan was making hmm, new Kabul, uh, earlier regime before the Taliban. So they were also building the cities because everybody is being told that if you want to grow, grow like this. So this is where the whole process has reached uh, to this uh, in that kind of process. Now provocations from that provocation, sorry, I went. Yeah, I hope <laughs> we will come to that. Uh, that that will be interesting. Uh, in global south, hmm, what is happening that uh, that. Uh, because of the fast growth surge, basically destabilizing the economy, society and environment and attempt to what is happening. One thing which has happened in India particularly, we have communist, socialist, we have Congress, Indian National Congress which is centrist and we have far rights. All of them have come to the com consensus that the growth is basically non-political issue. You, you understand? Economic growth is a non-political. Uh, it is not like that. It's political, embedded with the capital. Growth for what? Growth for whom? Growth for where? Growth for, again, why growth, for example? All these are the questions which a economist, a sociologist will try to answer. Hmm? And particularly academician, we are famous for that. Hmm? to really ask that, growth for what? So this is where it has become a non-political issue now and that is where they are leading to uh, that. Now, this growth is turning into the production of private privatopias, hmm? a big term. Privatopias means the production of private cities. Hmm? That is what is happening, uh, breaking down the symbiosis of city and city regions. All of you may be knowing uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, neoclassical growth theory, hmm? solo and swan model. Hmm? Solo and swan model re relies on what? The linkage between the city and then actually the region also. Hmm? 
and that is where Barrow and Sly Martin in 1992, they said the convergence of regions will take place. Convergence why will happen? Because the marginal productivity of the capital declines as accumulates. And that was the theory in 1950s when 56, 57, solo and so on, they developed it. You have Williamson, you have Kuznets and other the people are talking then inequality ultimately will come down. Don't worry about it. And Keynes said in the long run we are all dead. Hmm? So in the long run when the inequality comes down we don't know. But what is important here that relying on that model that there will be linkages between regions and cities and the city will grow and the good things will percolate down through the regions. The regional development will also happen. But what is happening today in these cities? The symbiosis between regions and cities are broken down. For example, Mumbai talks more to the New York, London and Paris than actually the Pune. You, you imagine the flows if you look at the people are flying from Mumbai consuming the biscuit. I have a bakery known as Paris bakery and I go every day for coffee. <laughs> so you, you see what is produced here consumed there. Our chef is from Paris trained for bakery. Hmm? So good uh, biscuits we are getting there, but that is another thing. But this is this is where, so this is small things to horribly going wrong in many directions. Hmm? So this is what is happening. So uh, this all actually breaking down. It means new classical. I, what I often say that the new classical growth theory, in terms of the regional convergence, need to re really looked at it. Reliance on the cities we really need to be looked into that whether it can take place now. Third thing, because why happening the, in the fast growth process? Farmers lose land and corporates through eminent domain. All of you know that I told you the farmers eminent domain often acquires the land. So it is like a pre primitive accumulation because the eminent domain takes over and fences. Is. Look at the, the in India like country and in Africa, I, everywhere where traditional societies are there. It is not that everything is written in the form. Everything is not actually uh, documented. For example, when the British left India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, they had some kind of actually given right to the farmers that the document was there. That came from the Mughal to the British and the government of India really took over that one, those document. And these documents have become basically prime importance of prime importance to prove that you have right over the certain territory or land, uh, unless you buy something new. Now what happened to the tribals? Huge land of India is under tribals and they do not have the private right but collective rights. Because everywhere they took their for the pasture, for their uh, animals and now these hills because if nobody is owning social control, it was by the tribals. Now government of India took over this as a government land. And what it does? Handovers to the corporate. Come here, establish your factory and all the farmers are gone. All the tribals are gone. So if this is the situation, how to really take care of this uh, primitive accumulation process, which actually Marx mentioned in UK that is taking place and creation of surplus population. Eminent domain estate. Okay. Yeah. Because that is where uh, 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 taking, controlling uh, everything. Now, another thing is because of the fast development is happening, bypass development. Bypass development, what is happening if you people protest in one region, they don't develop my neighborhood. Then what will happen? They will make uh, flyovers. And I have, if you look at the, uh, with the University of Leeds, I developed some videos of Mumbai hmm? because there are some communities which are traditional. They say, please let us live like as we are living. Don't widen my road. Don't do this for motorized transportation because when we move in this and the people come here, they come and take a cup of tea with me and they know me. And particularly I am talking about one area in Dongri from where the Bollywood emerges. Hmm? And this is very Muslim concentrated area because they had Urdu literature. They have lots of actually the uh, creative classes in that and that area now has a bypass. The first Mumbai's flyover comes over that and because they are protesting not to widen the road because this is important for the creative class to sit together. 
and this is actually what we call a bypass development and assault on the nature obviously all of you know and that where Bhaviskar called the middle classes environmentalism. For example, when we address environmentalism, B becomes a, a kind of bourgeois environmentalist. Bourgeois environmentalists like us, what they do, they say that, yeah, establish, if you have cut the root, cut the plants, establish, create the mimicry of the nature. The nature does not operate in mimicry. The tribal cannot live in the mimicry. So bourgeois environmentalism, which has lots of literature already, I don't go, but I borrowed from them. I quickly I'll go. Uh, yeah, yeah, just I try. No, no, yeah, no, no. I just ten more minutes and very quickly I try to come in. The uh, the second slow growth can be can have stability generating mechanism, and this is where it actually becomes very important for all of us. And growth uh, provides time. Because slow growth, what happens? Not only that takes the ill of those things, but it also provides. For example, I'm the first generation uh, English speaker. Mm -hmm. huh? I started speaking in my PhD. In assuming that there are many people like me in India, uh, unless I speak English, how will I get those kind of good jobs? Mm -hmm. So this will take generational change really to come in. If you consume and privatize everything very fast, the generation which is coming the now, I mean at the bottom, which will take another 20, 30 years to come up or 40 years to come up, they will not have the left properties and the resources for that. So the slow growth is that is why again becoming important. Now provocation, provocation two. I will move slightly faster here because we have set the background. Corporate knowledge economy creates those kind of consultant, hmm? all of you know. And there are many, many Accenture, McKinsey to many, many group which have come and they create the planning and other thing that is there. Experts benefit out of that. So what is happening? It is like gold rush in USA, no? All of you know. When the European first went there, they found lots of gold. Now experts from north moved to global south because there is lots of money hmm? in the policy particularly. And that need to be, and that is what they are promoting for faster growth and because Indian smart cities had that and there are many articles which are really, really scathing criticism that what actually these experts are doing here, huge money they are being given. Uh, uh, then actually this, uh, uh, this has become export centric, the policy making and policies happening that way and uh, uh, there is imported policies everywhere. Uh, what is happening in, in those countries, for example, for India. Uh, uh, I'm moving slightly faster here. Uh, there is no relevance. Huh? Uh, must, uh, what is happening, that local policy must consider the history and actually the sociology of area and economy of those area in order to need to be sustainable. But what is happening? The something which is succeeded somewhere, they are implemented everywhere. Hmm? without context. That actually another aspect. Third provocation I am coming, uh, discursive democracy. Hmm? Discursive democracy means a deliberative state, which actually states the, the we, have, we have lots of actually literature on that, that perhaps we don't actually mainstream those literature in the, our teaching, uh, that the policies need to evolve through the consultative process from the bottom up, hmm? not from the top down. And this process is actually where the state facilitate and that becomes very important and uh, that actually part which I am bringing and fast policies very important I am mobilizing Ulrich Beck that what we are creating through this process we are creating a risk society. Not only we have created bad in one place, for example one place we have created bad but this bad we are distributing everywhere. Not good we are distributing sometimes what they say, the bad we are distributing everywhere. Because what is happening? Look at in India, the class war, the religious war, the caste war, and the feminist affront with the uh, masculine uh, uh, thinking process. Why this is so sharply coming up? It does not mean everything was good earlier. But why this is sharply coming up? Because everybody wants development and everybody wants because they have been taught 
some of those who are the bottom they are not competing but those middle classes like us we are want our share and we are fighting for so everywhere in my uh, university also the people have the groups and they say that yeah these groups need to lead why because this is a sharpening of inequalities sharpening of the political thoughts sharpening of the uh, i mean the relationship is breaking down between the communities and all of you know that what is happening so this is where actually now i come to the eurythmic urbanism and that is very important and for that uh, i mean what we need that there is a coherence between body psychology society ecology and economy for sustainability and that will ensure what brentland called intergenerational and intragenerational inequality unless you do that you are not reaching that theoretical construct of sustainability and that is becoming and i mobilize here again i say the french sociologist who was very famous le febre hmm? le febre who are uh, led here the student revolution in 1968 even charles shall gall called him that you do not imprison uh, voltaire hmm? because he was so much against even shall charles gall hmm? that time so uh, uh, this this is how actually he said that what you read me he he wrote a book on that rhythm analysis hmm? read that book rhythm analysis is actually giving certain thoughts on how to really develop it again i will come very important with these slow cities can rebuild social time again i say social time is very important for the societies that you are able to spend your time enjoy development but social time as well but we don't have the social time today social time is not linear clock like as we flow a uh, social time can be recreated because tomorrow i want good party be to have to do tomorrow we will again sit down you cannot bring the time again that what is clock time and that is where leaf have become so important for all of us uh, and that that is come now i am coming up to very quickly to uh, 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 just two things i try to separate out that if you have fast cities and slow cities now just look at their characteristic some of them may be wrong but may be improved further uh, corporate centric fast cities slow cities are community centric fast cities are large slow cities are small hmm? because that may be more better fast cities are homogeneous homogenized uh, slow cities are idiosyncratic asset specific then you have fast cities single imperative of economic gain fast cities multiple imperative of social development belonging and economic change you have fast cities which is class led and inequitable and then you have slow cities community led hmm? and then you have fast cities which are machine led and then community led hmm? and then you have standardized and duplicated basically you produce one after another like mass good and you have community led and uh, craft oriented all you have and you can see the all the characteristics just read them that what we have in these uh, kind of uh, cities and further i just broken down all these part that what may be coming to uh, uh, this uh, in the fast city and slow city I, why can be done so now i will uh, sum it up uh, uh, that in very limited time we try to really talk some philosophical orientation that is there alternative to this speed production of cities if the cities have become very important for capitalist mode of production and growth obviously they need to be are uh, harbored and actually need to be nurtured but not the way where we are going to because it is creating lots of actually trouble global north experienced the growth it went through the world wars i say it was only global north has faced the world wars not the global south and if this capitalist mode of production goes on and the inequality between the societies rise not they will face civil wars but also india pakistan is sharing the indus water hmm? because already there is a dispute so i tell you that this this will be huge because more development more demand without any further augmentation of the water so there is a huge huge possibilities of disruption also possible because we consume the nature so fast and the resources are limited they are not actually unlimited hmm? 
and that bit where I, I will close. I'm sorry because we speak Urdu or Hindi and my terminologies and uh, uh, pronunciation may have been somewhere uh, not as per expected. I, I hope that you could make the sense what I talked about. Thank you very much. Thank you.